An attempt to land a spacecraft on the moon apparently failed today. And now Japan is trying again. Japan has become the fifth country. Japan's moon land. Japan has made history as the fifth nation. Japan is counting down to precision landing. Japan has become the world's fifth country. Japan has finally launched the rocket carrying its lunar lander. Japanese authorities now checking on the status of their moon sniper robotic explorer as it did touch down on the lunar surface in the last hour. Japan's slime probe made history with a beautiful moon landing. Japan became the fifth country to land a spacecraft on the moon. This major multi-year project delivers new, innovative technology that could revolutionize space exploration as we know it. But when there is happiness, people see something dark and mysterious on the screen, which causes everyone to talk. Turns out there's more to this than the world knows. What happened to the Selim probe on the moon? What secrets are revealed about the mission, its true purpose, and its impact on space exploration? Join us in this video as we explain all about Japan's Lunar Sniper mission. We finally found out what NASA was hiding. On January 19, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, landed its special probe slime on the moon. This incredible achievement made Japan the fifth country to send a vehicle to the moon. The project was launched in 2005 with the idea of building a small experimental lunar landing satellite. As of 2013, SLIM has been approved as one of the seven primary missions of the International Space Station. Fast forward to April 2016, SLIM became a JAXA project and Mitsubishi won the award to produce the aircraft. The most important purpose of this mission is to test new landing gear. If successful, the project will demonstrate precise landing technology that will impact the development of space exploration. SLIM's journey to the moon took approximately four months. The journey begins along the lines of the Gray Image and the Spectroscopy Target EXM. After leaving ALSM, SLAM changed direction and prepared to enter the startup. It entered the beautiful star on December 25, 2023, ending its journey with one of the best moon landings ever. Moon landings always face a big problem, landing in the right place. The Lunar Exploration Smart Lander is a concept that aims to use the latest technology to achieve a perfect lunar landing. The success or failure of this mission will determine whether the space exploration community has the best chance of landing on the moon or another planet. The mission of NASA and other space agencies has long evolved from landing anywhere on the moon to finding specific regions of the moon. Fortunately, the mission achieved great results on January 19 when the astronaut made a soft landing on his target. However, although the rover landed slowly, there were electrical problems. The solar panels which should be facing the sun due to the probe's descent, are facing the other direction, so slime cannot charge. JXS's ground team will send two rovers using rechargeable batteries to explore the solar system. Additionally, the multiband spectroscopic camera, NBC, mounted on slime was also able to capture some images from this period. Based on the data collected from the device, JX had decided to leave the probe on the moon until the sun changed the angle facing the solar panel as it was confident that the pilot did not suffer serious damage during landing. As you know, one lunar day is equal to 14 Earth days. So if you live on the moon, it will take a total of 14 days for the sun to rise and set. Initially, JXA planned to operate the probe using solar energy for at least two weeks. However, after the shock subsided, the only thing left to do was to wait until the end of the month. The sun's rays will then point in the direction of the solar panel and JX Day will finally be able to use its power for research. The process described by the Japanese in this mission proved that the moon landing was successful. Not only that, but they also proved that a weak spot on the moon is possible. This is something that has proven difficult even for an organization like NASA. One thing NASA didn't do during the Apollo missions was go on missions. For example, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin encountered problems landing the Apollo 11 lunar module. First. There was a major communication problem with the base, then many alarms were triggered. Overall, the automatic landing system appeared to be malfunctioning and Armstrong was forced to maintain manual control to land the module. But they landed in the wrong place. An additional fact is that Salon achieved this goal. Recent attempts to land on the moon have failed. Probes often fail when they try to land on the moon. They also hit unexpected places. But Japan's Salim managed to maintain a weak spot so that the rover could still be deployed. To give you an idea, imagine what would happen if a rocket suddenly lost its engine in flight. At worst, it crashed and burned. In the best case scenario, 
it will facilitate an emergency landing. But as you can see, even though the probe lost its nozzle, it still landed right on target. This made Japan one of the most profitable countries to dare to explore the moon. So far in the 21st century, only China has successfully landed on the moon. One still wonders why lunar probes in the 21st century have been less successful, even though NASA sent humans to the moon 50 years ago. Many skeptics have questioned this, and some experts in the scientific community have also suggested plausible explanations. First of all, there is competition. The USA and Russia are still at war. Each country is trying to prove its superiority over the others, and the space beyond our world is a war. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, with the full support of the United States government, has made significant investments in the development of the best lunar probes, lunar rovers, and landers. There is no war in space today. All the countries that completed the lunar mission made it easy to find or make a name in the history of space exploration. That's why today's probes or spacecraft are made from substandard materials to reduce costs. Additionally, most off-road vehicles are built by private companies. According to statistics, the failure of growers produced by private companies per month is 100%. The Japanese iSpace lander landing on the moon in 2023 is an example of this. Another problem for astronauts and observatories is the moon itself. Communication on the moon is a big problem because the big white satellite always interferes with radio signals. This can cause serious problems and is the main reason why the device falls into the wrong place. Likewise, the lack of air on the moon makes it difficult for ships to use parachutes. It all depends on the engine. The driver or controller must find a way to gently lower the rover to the ground while resolving communications issues. Finally, if the detector is too heavy, collision is inevitable. China's 2013 Chang'e 3 lunar mission is the first landing since Russia's Luna 24 in 1976. It's time to prepare for any landing issues. Fortunately, Japan came to the rescue. As you know, Japan Aerospace Agency has been collaborating with NASA for a long time. Therefore, there is no doubt that the new Japanese guide will come in handy for future NASA projects. For example, the Artemis program, which plans to send the next group of people to the moon after the Apollo missions, will benefit from some technologies. But there is a big problem. Slim strange things are happening on the moon, and JXXA can't figure out why. The probe was designed to land perpendicular to the target, but ended up landing face up. It is estimated that the accident was caused by external factors. Unless this mystery is solved, there is no guarantee that future NASA missions will succeed as planned. So what happened to Salim on the moon? For now, it's still a secret. This JXA probe is built with precision on the ground. For example, its legs are equipped with crumple zones to ensure a soft landing even when landing at higher speeds. The aircraft's target landing site is a 15 degrees inclined impact crater called Shali Crater. The detector was lowered onto a slope at 25.2 degrees 4889 east longitude and 49 degrees 13,315 degrees south latitude, just 55 meters from the target. This location was chosen to provide maximum sunlight. The rover's hind legs are shorter than the front legs to adapt to the slope. JAXA redesigned the vehicle to rotate at a 45 degrees angle before landing to good effect regardless of its weight. There are also two Mitsubishi engines and 12 attitude control thrusters. Usually lunar probes need to be equipped with more than one engine for better landing. Thrusters also play an important role in reducing speed. In the case of Salim, Descent is designed to occur in two phases or steps. First, the landing thrusters and small thruster will deploy, tilting the spacecraft onto its side. Five breakable aluminum caged landing legs will then deploy and cushion the final landing. So essentially, Slim has everything you need for descent. Unfortunately, it fell on its nose and no one knows why. One scary idea is that aliens might be responsible. JXA has confirmed that one of the Slime's engines failed before contact with the sun. And as far as they know, it was caused by something else. In other words, something must have interfered with the engine and caused the probe to fail. What will happen to the moon to replace the Salem engine? Could the same external factors cause multiple lunar collisions? Some conspiracy theorists who have long believed in the existence of aliens on the moon have shown that these creatures are responsible. But this is only a hope based on the mystery of the situation. The exact situation is still unknown. What JXA knows so far is that the Salem panels face west. Of course, there's not much we can do about the detector right now, except for the sun to shine on our detector again. The only way the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, 
JAXA. Knows what really happened is if it can see satellite images from satellites like NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. But SLIME's goal is to be successful compared to most other campaigns in the 21st century. If nothing else, the completion of this mission ranked among the best among the most successful moon landings. Landing points or destinations are marked in miles, but many people struggle to achieve their goals. However, for this purpose, JAXA measured the landing area in meters and SLIME hit the target by only 50 meters. Similarly, SLIME will be able to send at least two test rovers and use as much of the onboard research equipment as possible before the batteries run out. These two lunar rovers are called Lunar Excursions LVE and have their own unique features. LVE-1 is a frog-like rover that moves in a hopping motion, while LVE-2 is a small ball that splits into a camera wheel and bobs on the beach like a sea turtle. LVE-1 communicates normally with the ground station and also receives radio wave data sent by its sibling, LVE-2. However, JXA has not yet received images from LVE-1. The LVE-2 rover is the rover that captures Selim images of the moon. As you can see from the picture, the probe's thrusters should be pointing downwards. Instead, its thrusters are pointing upwards. Now the two travelers stand by, waiting for the day when the sun will shine on them again. If our calculations are correct, the lunar calendar will end on January 31. LVE-1 and LVE-2 must be reactivated at this time. As you know, the construction of the Salam spacecraft cost 88.118 billion yen, $120 million. Its total weight is 200 kilograms, and when fully loaded with fuel that weighs 700 kilograms. The fuel here is needed to power the thrusters during descent. The LVE-1 and LVE-2 rovers are another part of the mission that is both financial and strategic. LVE-2 was renamed SORAC due to its difficulty. The 0.25 kilograms rover JX Tete was jointly developed by Sony, Tomi, and Dashisha University. It's currently the smallest and lightest rover ever built, about the size of a baseball. SORAC was created by combining toy technology, sensor robotics, and JXA space technology. It was designed to be autonomous and adapted to the lunar environment. Shinet Sarosakai, project manager of Selim, said in an interview with the media, we have proven that you can land where you want to land, not where you can land. This will encourage more and more people, especially Japanese missionaries, to land on the unexplored part of the moon. The joint venture could send probes, rovers, and even humans to the western side of the moon. Over the years, many rumors and conspiracy theories have been put forward about the presence of aliens on this moon. From strange patterns and images scattered around, to strange radio interference and strange collisions during the moon's operation. There are many mysterious-like things on the side of the moon. There are rumors that NASA sent people to the west side of the moon and found a spacecraft there. Rumor has it that they brought back alien bodies and preserved them for analysis. However, NASA rejected this accusation, saying that the most difficult mission was Apollo 17. Since becoming the trusted international partner of NASA and the European Space Agency, JXA has continued to be recognized on the world stage. One of the important projects in which the organization has achieved great success is the International Office. Japan has also signed an agreement to help build several modules for the Gateway Lunar Station. Meanwhile, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, made plans for the mission. The launch of SLIME is just one of many projects to come. For example, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, plans to visit Mars soon. The Mars Lunar Probe is expected to be launched in 2024. The probe will go to Mars moons Deimos and Phobos and collect samples and data. JXA will use the Epsilon A3 launch vehicle for this purpose. The A3 exhaust vehicle is a two-stage vehicle that uses oxygen and liquid hydrogen as the reaction mixture. The first stage is powered by three engines, and the second stage is powered by a single engine. The first launch of the A3 rocket will take place in March 2023. At first, everything went well, until the rocket failed in the second stage as ordered. Therefore, the test failed. The next scheduled flight will be around February 2024. New Glenn is a huge release. The 98-meter tall rocket is powered by seven engines in the first stage and two engines in the second stage. This allowed Glenn to lift approximately 50 tons of payload into Earth orbit. New Glenn's first flight is planned for August 2024. NASA is taking an important step by launching a rocket, even though it has never been tested with such heavy objects before. All this shows that space exploration is developing and expanding. 
Thanks to Japan's advanced equipment and NASA's well-designed and well-launched probes, there is no doubt that the future of space missions will be bright. This begs the question, is Japan sending a probe to the moon to explore next generation Earth landing technology, or is there another reason? There is another reason why the Japanese sent SLAM to the moon to explore solar energy sources. On January 11, NASA announced a study on the possibility of harvesting solar energy from a spacecraft in Earth orbit and using microwaves to send the energy back to the ground. The aim here is to create clean energy. Although speculation continues regarding the actual cost of manufacturing and bringing these systems to market, many experts think so. If it works, it could help the United States and other countries that adopt it reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions by a deadline. You see, Collecting solar energy in a circle is completely different from collecting solar energy on Earth. There is almost no Earth's atmosphere there, so you receive solar energy in its purest form. The idea of taking advantage of this pure energy and sending it wirelessly to the farthest points of the world is very attractive. Various aerospace organizations, including NASA and JXXA, are working in this direction. The solar technology at Salim already provides sufficient data for these organizations. All that's left is for NASA or someone else to do what Japan did, and eventually the solar system can be built.